Are you looking for information and examples of episodic memory? Well, if so, this video is going to be incredible for you because we're going to learn how to access our episodic memory with some examples, but also in a way that just really makes this a powerful asset for ourselves, especially when we're using memory techniques. So if all that sounds good for you, hit that thumbs up, let me know you're ready, and let's go. So the first thing about episodic memory here is that it involves the recollection of specific events and, you know, it's essentially story-based. It's having a beginning and a middle and an end to the things that you recall about episodes either in your life or the lives of others or even in stories that have nothing to do with your own experience but you've experienced vicariously through the lives of others. And so it's really interesting. It's, it, it's quite different than uh, autobiographical memory, which we'll talk about in a second. But essentially, episodic memory is related to time. So it's where things have a beginning and a middle and an end. And of course, you don't really have to start at the beginning in order to explain an episode or experience episodic memory in your mind. You can skip to the end and go to the middle, or you can start in the middle and go to the beginning and then work your way to the end lots and lots of options. So that's really interesting. And uh, we need to understand that episodic memory is really, really linked to time in specific ways. Now, when it comes to episodic memory and autobiographical memory, you might be asking, are they the same? And the answer is no, not really, because autobiographical memory is more like the details of things. So I remember I used to lean against a particular wall in high school, and I can tell you that there's a wall in high school that I leaned against without getting into a big story. I can also tell you where I lived in high school, and I don't have to tell you about the cold winter days that I needed to get up super early in the morning and trudge through the snow, and then when I got there, you know, my my hot chocolate in my thermos was all cold, and yada, 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 right? I can just say, I lived on Fleetwood Street, you know, and that is in my autobiographical memory, and it doesn't require a story. So autobiographical memory is different. It's not necessarily related to time. It's just it's just a part of life or the lives of people that you might know, and it relates to information about them. So this is sort of related to semantic memory, which is kind of like facts, right? Like knowledge. Like I can remember that that wall that I leaned against was painted green, and I can remember that on most days the sky was blue. And that's just semantic knowledge memory, but it's not really related to a story as such, although it can be part of the story. I can tell you about this, how the sky was gray when I was at school on that cold winter day in my little story, or I could just say sometimes the sky is gray in Canada. It's winter, you know, and it's just a part of that sort of play-by-play. Uh, -play. So when we think about episodic memory plus semantic memory, then we get something very, very interesting, which is still not quite episodic memory. It's something called declarative memory. And if you want to get into the real nuts and bolts of it and the science, you can follow up some of the discussion that I have about this book on the Magnetic Memory Method podcast and the blog, which you can learn more by following the link below. Ultimately, episodic memory is something that is just story-based, as we talked about, and it also is very, very fragile, unfortunately. So there's a memory loss story that I have on the podcast with a friend of mine named Jenny Gorman, and she goes into detail what happened to her and the solution to getting back some of her episodic memory. So that's there. It's not related to the exercises I'm about to give you, but you might find it very useful. And basically, there are ways to keep your brain sharp and young. No matter what age you are now, you might want to attend to these things, and listening to Jenny's story could be a great corrective for you. So that link is down below. And of course, some of the exercises that we're going to talk about will help you listen to that story and actually use it as a episodic memory exerciser. So that's pretty cool. Now, in terms of examples of episodic memory, well, I've already given some, right? Like, I've given theoretical ones about how cold it might have been in Canada, walk into school and my hot chocolate being cold in my thermos and so forth. Now, that never actually happened. I'm creating an episode. But if I think of something that did happen, I can think about waiting for my brother to come home from the hospital. And I remember I wasn't exactly like the kid you see pictured here, but I remember leaning out the window and I remember there was an orange cat and, you know, I just was waiting and waiting in anticipation. And I can tell you that story. And so that's an example of an episode. And then I can extend that episode and think about other stories where I remember my brother and I playing in particular ways, climbing mountains, having tents in the backyard and so forth. Each of those are episodes. Sometimes they blur together. Other times they're very, very distinct. So everything is an episode. Very, very interesting. And then, of course, he can remember those exact same episodes 
and have very, very different stories to tell about them. So that's quite interesting. Now, in terms of, if you want to get into like really understanding this in terms of fiction and so forth, one of the most famous examples is In Search of Lost Time. So I highly recommend that you read that, and we talk about it more on the Magnetic Mary Method podcast in greater detail. But it's very famous in terms of someone going through the experience of memory and how it relates to time. And uh, it's a worthy read, very, very interesting. Now, ultimately... Recall and personal reminiscence is very, very important. It's important to your sense of identity, and it's something that you can use as a tool to strengthen your autobiographical memory, of course, but also your episodic memory. And basically, you can strengthen it. You can strengthen it very, very much. So when I think about my brother, I can do an exercise that relates to both autobiographical memory and episodic memory and think about the times that we played Super Mario together, for example. And so I can tell you a story about when we played it at my Uncle Lloyd's house in Maple Ridge in British Columbia, and I can tell you a story about how that we played it at home or think back to when it wasn't Nintendo but Atari and begin to think about specific stories. Like I remember getting really, really frustrated with Joust, for example, and he was really good at it, and he would go and read the instruction manual and so forth and that gave him an edge and then I can think about other video games like how we used to go to a particular arcade and you know getting our socks filled with quarters to go and play at this arcade and I'm going through my mind and going through all the video game memories that I have with my brother and this is helping to exercise episodic memory but it's very important that I try to think of what was the beginning of that day like or what was the middle sort of situation and then what did we do after that what would, what would it be like and even if it's not exactly the truth of the memory thinking about us walking back from an arcade begins to strengthen that and then connecting it with another story and another story. So that's a powerful thing. Now there's another way that doesn't have to do with you personally and your autobiographical episodic memories, but also you can use movies. So there's a link below that goes into a more complete and full tutorial about this on the Magnetic Memory Method blog and podcast. But anytime that you just want to watch a movie or watch an episode from a series, after you're done, replay the episode in your mind with as much detail as you can. Think about how it began. What was that opening scene? Think about the middle. Think about how it ended. What was the closing scene? This will help exercise your episodic memory. For some very, step-by-step very well. strategies, there is a link below that's going to teach you all about doing this and actually creating memory palaces from TV series. Now, the next thing is just to become a better observer of the world around you and think of the episodes that are happening, the little stories in life, the vignettes, let's call them. So maybe you're at the grocery store and you notice there's an interaction between some customers and one of the clerks at the till. You know, what was that? Remind yourself later to go through it. Tell another person. Process it through different units. That'll help strengthen your episodic memory. And then, of course, you can create memory palaces and use them and use the elements of episodic memory that help make things memorable when you're memorizing information. So think of your magnetic imagery that you're going to create, like if you used Super Mario and Luigi as bridging figures in your memory palaces and you follow them around, think of it like you're staging a play. Your memory palace is a theatrical stage and as they move around collecting, you know, little bits of things or whatever they're doing in order to help you recall information, you are essentially a, a, a stage director and you're helping them enact the play that will help you decode what it is that you're trying to remember. So we're not going to get into exactly all of that training now, but if you're interested, I do have a free course for you that will teach you how to create a memory palace and more about creating magnetic imagery inside of that. In general, the principles are to keep your images that you use, like if you're using Super Mario in a memory palace, make it really, really bright and vivid and make sure that it's visual at some level, it's conceptual. You've got some maybe taste and smell, which is olfactory and gustatory and other things. There, there, there's at least six modes plus the mode of space, which is what the memory palace is. And you're telling stories in this, in this space. So again, you are like a stage director and your bridging figures are like actors in a play in the memory palace. So I hope this helps you out, understand episodic memory better, give you some examples of it. And ultimately what you're looking to do is actually, if you're using memory techniques, is to create little episodes or vignettes in your memory palaces and have little actors who go around the memory palace and help you recall information through processes that essentially are called in the science elaborative encoding. And so there's lots of examples of that 
on this channel and at magneticmemorymethod.com. So if you're interested in more, make sure you take my free course at magneticmemorymethod.com forward slash YT. And, you know, I hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Let me know in the comments below if you have any questions about episodic memory. And if you haven't hit that thumbs up already, do so now, please. Let me know that you're engaged. And until we have a chance to speak again, keep yourself magnetic.